Hey y'all, it's Laura and I am back with an art journal and mixed media sort of tutorial using the stencils from Jane Davenport that I received from acherryontop.com. Now here are the designs that come in this flower girl set and it will help you to make faces without having to draw them yourself. So I'm gonna show you how I use these. I want to preface this by saying I am not a professional artist. I am just a mixed media hobbyist. And so this is perfect for those who maybe aren't super confident in drawing their own faces and vocal images for art journal pages and just wanna try out something new. So let's get started. So I find there are two main ways you can use these stencils. Now I'm sure there's more than two ways, but these are the two main ways that I've found really work for creating faces on an art journal background. So one way is to just simply create a background. You can do like this with watercolors. I'm using Prima's Odyssey and Tropical sets to just create a very simple watercolor, almost rainbowy striped background. And then I'm going to stencil on top of that with one of the faces. So I kind of go two ways here, create the background, add the face, or add the face and then build the background or decorate the face, if you will. Now, in this case, we're not going to be putting in a lot of detail on the face. It is just a focal image. The watercolor background really is the star of the show. And the face is simply a focal point for the background because if I leave this just as is, while it is very pretty, it doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, interest or a point to it. By bringing in one of these faces, even though I'm using uh, Black Dilutions paint here, which is quite wet, it's brand new, so <laughs> it's quite wet, and it'll smudge a little. I'm okay with that because this is more of a impressionist style focal image, so it doesn't have to be crisp, doesn't have to be completely clear. It just has to generally give you the idea of what the focal image is. So as you see, when I pull this up, it's a little bit soft and very, very fuzzy, and that's okay. That's the point. It was just supposed to be showcasing the background with a focal image that's very simple. Now, in this case, I am going to be stenciling with ink, so I'll get a nice crisp face. And we're going to mostly focus on this girl's hair. Now, there is no hair in these stencils, so you're creating everything yourself. And I'm kind of excited by that, to be honest. I just think that that's kind of the fun part of drawing a person is playing with their hair. So I'm gonna spend quite a bit of time creating a very beautiful purple and blue hairstyle here. Is this realistic? No, it's not intended to be. It's just for fun. And I want you to have fun with it. You're going to see something very important about painting, and that's layering. Bringing in lots and lots of layers because at some point you will look at this and think, mm, boy, that's a hot mess. <laughs> because I'm thinking that at several points while making it. But when you get to the end, all of the detail, all of the layering that you add in really make a huge difference. So even though I'm adding a lot of blue at this point, by the end, it won't look blue at all. It will look very several, several layers of purple. But adding this blue kind of tones down some areas of that bright purple and kind of helps it blend in a little bit better. But the overall idea here is to use this stencil as a beginning, as a starting place instead of a finishing spot. So whereas the last one, the stencil was our last step, it finished off the spread. This one, the stencil is the beginning. It is the trigger of your imagination. And then you can come in and add anything you want to do. You could do very simple hair. You could spend more time on uh, details of the face or the eyes. If, for example, that you want to practice drawing eyes or painting eyes, this is a really great stencil for that because it does give you just the impression of where do the eyes belong on the face? Where are the details, the, the outlines of areas that you should paint. And I think that that's awesome. I think it's a really great way to uh, just kind of initiate you into drawing faces or painting faces. And I know Jane, Jane Davenport also has some books about drawing faces and painting faces, if you're interested in learning more about that. I really like Jane Davenport's style. I think her girls that she makes are beautiful and vivid and kind of fantastical in some ways. 
And I think that's really cool. It's a really cool way to uh, take on art if you're afraid of realism. If realism intimidates you, because the fact of the matter is it's hard to draw a woman who looks realistic. So going the more imaginative route, uh, choosing to pick colors that are more fantastical and exciting and bold and bright, rather than trying to be truly realistic, is a lot easier for beginners. And that's something I definitely encourage you to do because by trying to pick realistic colors, you kind of box yourself in. Whereas you go with fantastical colors and if it looks wild and crazy, that's okay. It's meant to. <laughs> It helps you manage your expectations for your artwork as a beginner. Now, I'm going to do a lot of layering here with the eyes, with the face, with the hair, but the bottom line is this just gets you started in the process of adding a focal image of a face to your art journal pages. I will come in and draw some shoulders for her, just something very simple. I'm not going to go in a great deal of detail on her outfit. I'm not going into a great deal of detail on her face, really. I'll come in and layer it a little bit more because that really makes a big difference. Adding in the detail work, adding in the layers definitely takes your painting from looking very bland to looking really fantastic. Off camera, I will also come in with a white uniball pen and just highlight the tar out of her hair, her face, anywhere that that black outline is, I'm gonna come in with that white highlighter just to bring in a little bit of lighter tone. But the real star of the show on this particular picture is of course her hair. That's why it's purple. That's why it's so bright and bold is because I want her hair to be the star of the show. And I will even use one of the little florals, and you'll see that in just a minute, uh, to add to her hair, to bring more focus to her hair, and to kind of blend in some areas that maybe I didn't feel totally confident in right there where it meets uh, the side of her face. That is a tricky area to work in. Again, I'm not a professional. I'm just a hobbyist having some fun with it. I'm going to draw some lines in here, again, adding some detail work, and then I'll follow those lines with a little bit of darker watercolor to add to that dimension, add to that detail that I'm making in her hair. And I will also come in with some white watercolor to kind of soften that line. Because while I do want that detail, I do want that in there. I also don't want it to look like I've taken a Sharpie and just drawn that in. I don't want it to feel entirely cartoonish. I want it to feel fantastic, fantasy style. The point of these stencils really is giving you a starting place, allowing you to take the image and run with that idea, to be inspired by the face that you can create with these stencils. I think it's a really cool idea to have in your toolkit, just picking up one set to play with and also kind of get a feel for how faces are uh, made up so that when you go to try this, maybe your own sketching version, your own painted version of a face, you kind of get used to the way it's shaped, where everything goes, all of those little details that can be kind of hard just looking at a real face. Now I am going to bring in this little floral area. I'm going to ink up a floral and put it in her hair. This is still part of that same Flower Girl set and I love this aspect of it. Being able to pop in little accessories like this really make a big difference. It kind of makes the hair pop in a big way. I am going to just fussy cut this out. This isn't on mixed media paper because I'm not going to paint it. It's just a very light thin piece of paper that I am going to then glue into my book. So here are the finished projects. I hope you enjoy them. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Thanks so much for joining me. Until next time. Bye.